start. Hello, we're going to test a uh, effluent pump or a lift station in a septic system. You can use it for your sewage ejector or whatever you want. First thing you do, take everything out of your upper pocket because I guarantee you I know where it goes. Second thing, you want to know if you have juice up to the system. And I've got this handy little light here. I plug it in and the light lights up and gets warm. Uh, you might say, well, heck, just pull in the pump. You want to get a little closer here? This right here is called a piggyback plug. This uh, goes to the float, which controls when the pump goes on and off. Now, right now the tank is empty because the homeowner, it backed up and right away they call the pumper and he pumps it out. Well, then we can't truly give the pump a real good test. But for demonstration purposes, uh, we'll give it the test at dry. So what I'm going to do is I've got my knee glasses. I've got a little short extension cord here, and I've got my amp meter. Uh, I'm going to turn it to... Where is it? It's been a while. Oh yeah, AC amps. I'm going to start out at 150 here. The reason you start out at 150 is this is not a digital one, and you don't want to peg the meter and fry the meter. So anyway, what we do is get it ready to go here. Oops, wrong cord. We get the pump cord ready to go here. This one's not cooperating. There we go. And you'll notice it'll pop up a little bit. Ooh! Let's see. Well, I'm going to put it down a range here. We'll put her on the 60. Pops up a little bit. Now we'll put it on the 15 and you'll notice it. That's your starting current. That's your running current. We're sitting at... Um, on the 15 amp range. Okay, about a seven, almost seven. No, we're at about uh, 13 amps right here. You're, you look at the 150 divided by 10. 13 amps is more than a pump should draw without uh, a load on it. It should be more down seven or eight. When you get up with the fluid in it, if you draw 13 amps, 12 amps, that's fine. So that's one test. Another thing we have problems with is the uh, gophers and critters chewing through the electrical lines. And you'll get a low voltage. So we'll check our voltage here at the pump. And with this complicated uh, system I have here. I'm going to have to have you look at the um, uh, meter here and read it. I'm going to plug her in here. And I'll tell you, you'll probably notice when I get it on. What's going on here? I guess I'm not making a good oh, jump. There it goes. Up oh, there. Jumps up to about that 15. Okay, so it's at about, uh, where's the 150? We're at about 120 volts here. So that's fine as far as voltage goes. Now, when they wire these guys up, it's required to have a dedicated circuit. So if you get down here real close and look, take a, show that outlet, that is not a legal outlet he's got in here. So, uh, yeah, 
uh, some of these electricians. If you look at how our cords run up, some of them you open up the manhole and it looks like a spaghetti factory, but you can see all our wires are neat and orderly. Uh, the pump line comes up to replace the pump. We just saw the uh, line right here, and then we'll put a uh, uh, what am I trying to say? No hub clamp. Not a no hub clamp, but a fern co. A threaded uh, coupling there. So next time when the pump gets replaced, you just unthread it. One of the I heard one of the other guys say not putting your threaded fitting in or a disconnect coupling in there is a work of a hack. No, that's the work of a guy who's been doing this for about 50 years. What the problem was years ago, the couplings they had, like fern co's, would blow apart. Not blow apart, but the pipes would blow apart from the pressure. So we quit doing that. Then they came up with these beautiful screw-on couplings, and we started putting those in. The problem with those is the O-rings weren't properly retained and then you'd end up dropping the o-ring so then i thought oh i'll get a half a dozen o-rings and if i ever drop one i'll replace it well then that model went out then they came with another model and another model and they all had different size o-rings so finally i just thought okay when the pump goes we'll replace it we'll cut it off and replace it and save the hassle of poor couplings or poor uh one last thing we want to show yes what uh the pump would be reading if it's a good pump or what the pump will be reading if it is a bad pump okay well you don't have to look at this because this won't tell you anything um if your voltage coming your line voltage is well below 120 then possibly the gophers have eaten into the line or some other critter. Um, if your current is going over 15 amps, that probably means your seal on the bottom of the pump has gotten weak and it allowed moisture into the bearing and that increases the current draw as the bearing fails. Um, and as the bearing continues to wear, the seal wears, then eventually it'll blow the breaker. It'll start drawing 20, 30 amps, and then it's an emergency. So it's nice when you service something, if you do the voltage and current check, and you can, uh, let's say it was just the float that quit, you can say, gee, this pump isn't that terrific, which it isn't, because you can hear it pretty well, that bottom bearing humming. And you can say, oh, we can replace it all right now and save the trouble of coming back and doing it again. Anything else? Okay, thank you.